Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Pablo and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Pokemon. But for this episode, we're not going to talk about Pokemon. I'm going to make a Pokemon. And I'm going to make Molifar Magnemite. But first, to make this Pokemon, you must understand its origin. I'm not really talking about the whole why Kentucky Mori made it. I'm not really talking about that. I'm talking about like why I made one. So, cue to Ripple flashbacks. Yeah, I'm not gonna like reenact a play or anything or show a video. This isn't Family Guy, but I'm just gonna tell you the story. So basically, it was spring break. Uh, I want to make Pokemon real. I thought, well, man, that's a robot. I can make a robot. Why not? Um, I did some t attempts. I didn't have enough parts for that. You know, I didn't have the parts, I didn't have the money. I soon realized that when I come back from spring break, it'll be April Fool's. So I said, oh, why not make a little shocking toy device, you know, get back at some people during April Fool's. And so that's how this little guy was born here. So I'm going to get started on how I made this guy. So to make magnet, we're going to need a small magnet, some crazy glue to hold it together. You can use other glues, I'm just using this one. So I got two screwdrivers, a uh, tack, this small piece of plastic, um, two of these, I forgot their names. Two of these little screws, and these two screws, in which are kind of the screws that stick out of magma. I know they're not different sized, but I couldn't find any at the same size. We're also gonna need this a small capsule ball, you know, Pokemon capsule ball, real white. Thought I'd go with that. We're also gonna need one of these, which can be found in electric types the barbecue lighters. Not the gas types, electric types. Now you're probably wondering what about these little magnets that Magnemite, that my Magnemite has. Um, these are, I'm not really sure what they are. I just found them one day and I thought, oh finally, I can use this or I am I? My friend says that they're actually like some sort of plumbing tool, like a fixture or something like that, so I guess you can try to find one some of these at a hardware store. I would recommend trying to find those tiny U-shaped magnets. I'll just try to find those little plastic toys. I would recommend going with that. Okay, so let's get started on okay, this. Okay, so first thing you want to do is you want to open your little capsule wall. I know you can't see my head, but this is the best angle I can get for me to show you these things. Now you're going to find the one, the base of this capsule wall, because it's most likely to stand on this. It will stand like on the edge right there. Now you're gonna need your tack. The reason why you're gonna need a tack is you're gonna puncture some holes. You're gonna get your top ball, and you're gonna puncture the hole in that little dot it has. So kinda just Sorry you can't see. So kinda just dab it right in there. You know? Maybe wiggle it around so you can get your little bun area of magnemite. Now, I'm not going to do the two holes for these because I do not have extras of these. So I'm just going to skip that part. But I am going to pun puncture the holes for these little screws right here. So you're going to kind of have to eyeball where those are going to go. So once again, you're going to have to stab it right in there. Pow, right in the kisser. You know, try to make them even. Pow, right in the kisser. Yeah, I'm out. Now, they're, obviously, they're pretty small, so you're gonna have to like keep stabbing them in, make them a little bigger. You know, wound it up like this. Um, maybe get your screwdrivers. Maybe stab it right in there as well. That way, you can get a bigger hole. Okay, you know this is tedious. I'm probably just gonna. See, see, yeah, this is why I recommended not to do this. I'm just going to show you how I did this. I do not recommend making this. I'm not hurt. I'm good. You know, I'm just going to skip this part. So, it's going to pass a little bit. After you do your little holes, this is the most important thing, actually. Well, the second part, you have to do it, or else you're just going to be really pissed. Okay, get your little tiny magnet. As you can see here, I have these rare earth magnets. And you have to put it at the bottom. You know, that's how mine... That's how actually mine is mag mine's actually magnetic. That's how it's sticking to my arm all this entire time. Well, sticking to my shoulder. So, yeah, as you can see, look, it's already getting to the screws and everything. So, 
I don't really feel like making another one, so I'm not really going to use this super glue. I'm just going to get like a little tape and put that in there. So, there. I'm going to put in the bottom right there. See? That way, when you put in your... That way... Because if you put in your screws now, and then you try putting in the mat, it's just going to attach to the screws like this. See? That's why you have to do that. Whoops. <laughs> Okay, so now what you going now what I did later was after the holes I had to screw in the screws. And screw in the screw. So yeah, I screw it in there. Um enough room. You know, not like all the way in there. You want them to scout like magnets, so just enough room for you to like so that you can attach the cable. Like just strap it around the cable to it. And then put this little is this a nut? I want to say nut, right? Or bolt? Just so you can just like, this is just for extra, like security right there. It's just to secure it on there. You know, that's how you do it. And later, you what you would do is that you get this little piece of plastic or rubber. Now this is also a very good part. Like I do not recommend stacking in more magnets. So what you want to do is that you want to put the rubber on the magnet and then put this thing on the rubber. You would glue that all together and then attach the wire and then attach one wire to one screw and then um, some of them have a wire connected to here. You're going to have to like get a piece of wire and like wrap it around here and then wrap it to another screw. You get that. But yeah, very important. Actually, get a piece of rubber to separate the magnet and this I do not know what it's called because if you do trust me I made that mistake if you do once you shock someone you're gonna get shocked too not as much maybe not as much but you are gonna get a surprise because this plastic is not is not enough to like is not enough to protect you from this shock and it's actually pretty painful I actually like get got some rubber bands wrapped it around it touched them Touch the rubber bands and just push the button, and I got shocked from that. So, yeah, like I, I know, like rubber and plastics are resistors to electricity, but if you have strong enough charge, it can take down any resistor. So, very important, you know. So, yeah, once you've like screwed in these, put the bolts, put the wires, everything, once you've got the hole on this, then you just put them all together, you know. Uh, this looks weird. But yeah, you put them all together. See, look, I'll open up my magnemite. As you can see here, see, you got the little plastic, you got your nuts and bolts, you got your wires. Now, I spray painted this. Um, you're probably wondering what's the little dot. Um, yeah, that's just an LED light. It's not connected to anything. See, as you can see, you need the two screws to connect whatever these are. See, I have to poke a hole through the tech. But yeah, this LED, I, I just, it's just a little touch I made to make it look more robotic. Yeah, it's not, like, I don't want to do more wiring. So I would just, like, recommend just getting a sharp and put a red dot. I also recommend not using spray paint. I use spray paint, and that's kind of, yeah, that's not a very, uh, that's actually not a good idea. I recommend actually, like, hand painting it, you know, give it, like, a little quality, you know, that we have a better control of where the eye is going to be. And... Or just get like a gray sharpie and just color all over. It's tedious, but trust me, it would look good and it won't shock you because I think spray paint has tiny metal fragments because when I tested it out with the spray paint, um, like when you use these, when you use electric lighters, you can see like a little arc light. You can see electricity jump from one piece of metal to the other. Well, I didn't see this jump to here. No, they're too far away to do that. Instead, for some weird reason, I saw this jump to here. I don't even know how. And jump to here, like, either maybe there's like faulty wiring or something. That's why I'm not recommending that you do this. I'm just showing you how I made it. I'm not recommending you to build this. I'm just showing you how I made it. And so, yeah, I would, oh, oops, dropped it. But yeah, I would recommend hand painting it and or just getting a sharpie seriously um, and that's how I made my little friend Magnemite here uh, like I kept it on my shoulder by getting like a little piece of metal 
Oh, sorry, I'm kind of shining at you. What I did is that all this time I've been putting it on my shoulder. And I just, you know, since he has the magnet on the wall, I'm put it right there. See? A little friend magnet mat right there. But I've actually been working on an upgrade for it, which I'll show you in just a little okay, bit. Okay, so one way that I figured out a way how to upgrade this, well, how to upgrade my little magnemite here is this. Yeah, that's right. Just throw it away. I decided to go with a little more technological way. You know those little, like, UFO helicopters that their only way, that their only command is just up and down. Up and down, up and down. Well, those, they like everyone else, are gonna break eventually. So, what I was mine is like, I took it apart, took away the motor, and connected the motor to this little circuit, which is from an old shock pen. And so, all I had to do is connect one wire to this. Well, one leg screw to this wire and the other one to this wire. So I'll basically just turn it on. Yeah, it still has the LED lights. I have no idea how to change that. And then I would basically just turn this on and then just go up for more shock or down for less shock. Yeah, I wouldn't rec um, I'm not recommending that you would do this either. I'm not recommending you to do any of this. I'm just showing you like my that I like to invent. These are just like my little products I like to do. You know, I'm trying to bring Pokemon to the real world, you know. And yeah, that's how my old friend Magnemite's made. You know, I will make this eventually. I'm trying to make a remote control one with which I can actually like move it. I'm working on that. Like I know Magnemite floats and everything, but I thought you know, making it roll on the ground is more authentic. It's more logical, because true in the show and like in the game, it's just defying gravity there, just being its little magnets and moving its little screws around. Whoopee! But its ability isn't levitate, so it's still affected by earthquake and other ground types. Its abilities are sturdy and magnet pull. I guess its ability is magnet pull. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how my little friend's made. So, uh, it doesn't really bother me that I can't flow in midair. Don't know how I would do that. My best guess for making a little magnet to flow in midair is maybe magnetics, you know, monopoles. Same thing, that way it would flow, but I don't know how that would work. Another way would be, I guess, make this a balloon with a little devices inside, hopefully the batteries and every all circuitry is not as heavy so the balloon will flow. But yeah, honestly Magnemite and Porygon's evolutions, they're our closest thing to actual Pokemon since the robots. Another close thing would be holographic video 3D video games, but no one has the technology for that so far. Well thanks for watching, click like, subscribe, don't be a dick about the comments, you know. The usual stuff, and I'll see you guys next time.